Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Lewis University's Television Network. Today is Thursday, September 21st, 2023. I'm Allison Lankowitz. And I'm Samira Martinez. And we begin with our top national and international stories. Convicted killer Alex Murdaugh has pleaded guilty to nearly two dozen federal fraud and money laundering charges. In court today, Murdaugh said he wanted his son to see him take responsibility for his actions. Murdaugh was a personal injury lawyer who was accused of stealing millions of dollars from his clients. The judge signed and accepted the plea agreement. Murdaugh faces up to 30 years in prison for these crimes. He's already serving two life sentences for the 2021 murders of his wife. Five Americans who were in prison in Iran have been freed and landed in the U.S. Tuesday night. The Americans have been designated as wrongfully detained by the Biden administration. They were freed as a part of a wider deal that includes the U.S. unfreezing $6 billion in Ukrainian funds. Three of those believed to be part of the deal. Iman Sharzi, Murad Tabaz, and Shamik Nizami were imprisoned for more than five years as part of the agreement. $6 billion in Iranian funds held in restricted accounts in South Korea will be transferred to a restricted account in Qatar. The Biden administration says that the funds can only be used for, I, I, by Iran for humanitarian purposes and will closely be monitored by the U.S. Migrant crossings along the U.S. southern border are rising. Homeland Security officials say there were more than 8,000 apprehensions on Monday. This was around the number of daily border crossings before Title 42, which was the COVID-era restriction that expired in May. In the months since, border crossings fell dramatically, but are now ticking up amid, again, amid ongoing mass migration across the Western Hemisphere. The influx is straining federal resources and overwhelming already crowded facilities. Officials say many of the current crossings are families, creating challenges for officials. A funding bill for the Defense Department will not make it to the House floor for debate. It was voted down Tuesday in a procedural vote, not, not getting the majority threshold needed. The vote was 212 to 214, and 218 is needed for passage. Five Republicans voted against the rule for the appropriations measures. House Democrats have made it clear they won't provide help to clear procedural votes. Tuesday's House actions comes as a potential government shutdown looms at the end of the month. A manhunt is underway in St. Louis after authorities say a prison inmate escaped custody while at a hospital. 45-year-old Tommy Wayne Boyd, who is considered dangerous, was taken to the hospital for treatment Wednesday. He was last seen just before 4 a.m. Thursday morning by hospital personnel. Authorities have surveillance video showing Boyd leaving the hospital on foot. He is serving a 30-year sentence for statutory sodomy. Up next, we will have your local news. We'll be right back. Romeoville police have identified two persons of interest Wednesday after a family was shot, was found shot to death in their home over the weekend. 31-year-old Nathaniel Huey Jr. of Streamwood and a, woman, and a woman with the relationship to Huey were identified as persons of interest in the killings. 
The suspects were involved in a car crash and shooting in Katuska, Oklahoma. Oklahoma officials were alerted to a vehicle in their jurisdiction that matched a description of the suspect's vehicle. The vehicle drove away and crashed during an, attempt, an attempted traffic stop and then caught on fire. The woman was in critical condition with a gunshot wound and Huey was found dead in the driver's seat from a gunshot. The brother of a man found shot in a home in Bolingbrook Monday is now charged with his murder. Timothy Terrell Davis, age 28, is charged with three counts of first-degree murder, one count of armed habitual criminal, and one count of unlawful use of a weapon by a felon. Bolingbrook police were called to a home in the 300 block of Walnut Circle just before 2 p.m. for report of a person shot where they found 33-year-old Devon Davis shot inside. He was then taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police said at the time they believed the shooting may have been the result of a family argument and wasn't a random act of violence. Davis appeared in bond court Wednesday and was ordered to be held without bail. Glenview Police Detectives and North Regional Violent Crimes Tax Force have declared the death of 38-year-old Glenview man as a homicide. Fadal Obeid was found dead inside his home in the 700 block of Long Road in Glenview Monday night. Neighbors say that this man was from Iraq and bought the home in June, which he was rehabbing. They said he had plans to move his fiance from the Middle Eastern country to come live with him. Glenview police said they believed Obeid was targeted and no known threats to the public exist. For the first time in years, enrollment remains stable in Chicago public schools. CPS has faced decreasing enrollment rates in the past year after shutting down 50 schools a decade ago. City Council Education Committee Chairman Alderman Jeanette Taylor partially credits a new administration and successful CPS back-to-school bashes for keeping enrollment numbers flat. However, some success may be due to the influx of migrant students. While CPS doesn't track immigration status, the number of students in temporary living situations is on the rise as well. And while enrollment appears to be leveling off, preliminary data analyzed by Chalk Beat Chicago shows a trend of decline of low-income students. Later this month, CPS will offer more analysis and context to its enrollment numbers. The son of Mexican drug lord Joaquim El Chapo Guzman has pleaded not guilty to money to drug and money laundering charges. Ovedio Guzman Lopez made his first court appearance in a federal courthouse in Monday in Chicago Monday afternoon. He was extradited from Mexico on Friday. During the hearing, prosecutors say the death penalty was taken off the table as part of extradition negotiations with Mexico. Guzman Lopez will be held without bond pending trial and is due back on court on November 17th. He was arrested by Mexican authorities back in January and has been in custody ever since. When we return, we will have our entertainment news. And later, we will have your weather and sports update. If I could go back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change, could go it. Back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. The late frontman of the band Queen, Freddie Mercury's possessions brought in more than $50 million. The biggest sale of the evening was a Yamaha Baby Grand Piano, which went for $2.2 million. The piano was used to compose some of Queen's biggest hits, including Bohemian Rhapsody. Another big sale, handwritten lyrics for the epic song, went for $1.17 million. They include the song's original working title, Mongolian Rhapsody. Another interesting item 
was Mercury's Tiffany & Company Silver Mustache Comb. It sold for $189,000. Mercury left all of his possessions to his former fiance and longtime friend, Mary Austin. She held on to them for more than 31 years after his death. She's selling them off now with part of proceeds going to Mercury's Phoenix Trust and Elton John's AIDS Foundation. Marilyn Manson must pay a fine and do community service after an incident at a 2019 concert. Manson, whose given name is Brian Hugh Warner, pleaded no contest to a simple assault charge Monday. The singer assaulted a concert videographer during a show in New Hampshire in 2019 by spitting and blowing his nose on the victim. In a statement read in court, the videographer said the assault was disgusting and humiliating. Manson was fined $1,200 and ordered to perform 20 hours of community service by February 2024. He was also ordered to notify the Guilford Police Department if he plans to perform in the state in the next two years. Singer Katy Perry has something to roar about. She, just, she had just sold her music catalog to Litmus Music for reportedly hundreds of millions of dollars. The Carlisle Group made the announcement Monday. The deal includes the song and albums Perry released from 2008 and 2020. That includes One of the Boys, Teenage Dreams, Prisms, Witness, and Smile. Billboard citing sources say the deal is worth and reported $225 million. In a statement from, Lit from Litmus co-founder and CEO says they are grateful to be working with someone whose integrity shines in everything she does. Perry is about to wrap up her Las Vegas residency, which will run through November 4th. Blink-182 announced in a video trailer that their new album titled One More Time drops on October 20th. It's their first album with Tom DeLonge in 12 years. Singer and guitarist DeLonge left the band and was replaced with Matt Skiba. Now DeLonge's back to reform the classic lineup with Mark Hoppus and Travis Barker. They recorded the new album in 2022 and 2023 during the reunion tour. The band explains that Hoppus' battle with lymphoma inspired DeLonge to rejoin them. The trailer includes a listing of the 17 tracks on the new album. Talks are resuming this week between the Writers Build, the Writers Guide of America, and the Alliance of Motion Pictures and Television Producers. This, after a long month, Hadius, WGA sent a message to members Monday, confirming the meeting. The last time the two groups met was in August and nothing of substance came out of that meeting. Members of the WGA have been on strike for 140 days. They are asking for better wages, among a number of other demands. So far, the two sides have made progress on artificial intelligence regulations, though there is still to be little, little to be said agreement, disagreement there. On the table now, streaming res residuals and pro proposals for a mandatory staffing levels in TV writing rooms. Up next, we will have your weather forecast. Then we will have your Lewis Sports update. Stay with us.
And now for your seven day forecast. So unfortunately today it is a little cloudy and gloomy with a little bit of rain, although it has a high of 73 and tonight will drop to a low of 64. Moving to Friday, we will see the sunshine again with partly cloudy skies with a high of 76 and a low of 62. Now on Saturday, it's going to be very, very sunny, nothing but clear skies with a high of 73 and a low of 59. Going into Sunday, the clouds will be back with a partly cloudy, sunny sky with a high of 69 and a low of 60. Moving into Monday, we will continue to see the partly cloudy skies and sunshine with a high of 67 and a low of 59. Now on Tuesday, we will get a little hint of fall weather with a high of 65, which is a little cooler, still partly cloudy skies, will drop to a low of 58 degrees. And on Wednesday, we'll see more back with more sunshine with a high of 67. And coming up, we will have your Lewis Sports Update. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change, I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Well, the Lewis women's volleyball team can finally unpack their bags after three long weekends of out-of-state travel. The Flyers finished off their non-conference away series this past weekend at the Walk-On's UWF Invitational in Florida. Day one of the tournament included two big wins for the Flyers, with Lewis beating both Spring Hill and Flagler College in three sets each. The ladies continued their winning streak into the first game of day two, taking down the University of Charleston before losing their final match of the tournament to the host, UWF. Leaders for the Flyers included Lauren Stenman with over 100 assists throughout the four games, Allie Hickey with 57 digs total, and Juliana Van Lu and Megan Schlechty combining for 78 kills at the invite. The Flyers play their first home game of the 2023 season against Drury this Friday at 6 p.m. The Lewis women's soccer team took a shutout victory over Southwest Baptist this past Sunday, 3-0. Very well executed play done by the Flyers. Lewis came off strong from the start with having a pair of shots taken on goal in the first 15 minutes. Moments later, Melissa Hadzik put Lewis on the board 1-0 to end the first half. The second half, Lewis came out even stronger. Brianna Culver found the back of the net to make it 2-0, and Tamika Ronique had a penalty in the 74th minute to close the game with a flyer victory. Lewis will host a GLVC opener versus William Jewell tomorrow, Friday, September 22nd at 5 p.m. Former Lewis men's lacrosse player Drew Andre was drafted into the National Lacrosse League this past Saturday. The British Columbia native was the sixth round 84th pick of the NLL draft and joined the Vancouver Warriors to become the second Lewis men's lacrosse player to join the professional league. Andre was a part of the first team Lewis men's lacrosse team at Lewis, where head coach Joe Peruzzi believes he grew into an elite player ready to embrace his opportunity. Andre will reunite with his former Lewis teammate, Drew Cask, playing once again on the same team, but this time as Warriors. The Lewis men's soccer team also shut out Southwest Baptist this past Sunday, September 17th, with a 2-0 victory to receive their first win in the GLBC. The Lewis men's came out with fire, having five shots on goal in just the first 11 minutes. Justin Darledge, a senior this year, fired a shot from, le from the left side of the goal box, off the right post, and right into the back of the net to give Lewis lead 1-0. Second half bega began, Yoram Bogers had a free kick opportunity from deep, perfectly for Arthur Garod Nickus to chip it into the back of the net. Southwest Baptist took four shots on goal during the final 20 minutes, but it was not enough. Lewis secured the victory and will host their home opener against William Joel tomorrow, Friday, September 22nd at 7.30 p.m. 
The Flyer men's cross-country team raced their way to victory this past Friday at the National Catholic Invitational in South Bend, Indiana. The Flyers raced in the small school division and earned a total of 105 points at the invite. Junior Charlie Worth contributed to the big win, taking home the small school title with a time of 25 minutes and 23 seconds in the 5K. Senior Sean Ryan also contributed by recording a time of 25 minutes and 34.8 seconds to finish in second. Other fast flyers leading Lewis to victory were sophomore Owen Thomas, graduate student Patrick Hennessy, freshman Evan Horgan, and senior Casey Quintana. The team will race again this Saturday, September 23rd, at the Lucian Rosa Invite in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And that's it for today's news. Thank you for watching. As a reminder, you can always keep up with Lewis University's television network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and by visiting our YouTube channel. I'm Samara Martinez. And I'm Allison Lankwitz. Have a great night.